In this video, we're going to analyze the motion of an object that is rolling without slipping as it accelerates down an inclined plane. In particular, I'd like to derive an equation for the linear acceleration of the center of mass of some object that is moving as I've described. And so in order to do this, I'm going to need to know what forces are acting on this rotating object. The first force that I'll add to the diagram is due to the weight of this object, a gravitational force that acts on the center of mass of this object and points straight down. I'll label that force mg. Next, I'll add that if the rotating object is in contact with the inclined plane, that means there should be a normal force that is exerted on this object that points perpendicularly away from the plane and I'll label that N. What I noticed so far about the free body diagram is the gravitational force acts on the axis of rotation and the normal force points toward the axis of rotation which means neither one of these forces can cause a torque. And so if the object is going to rotate then there must be some other force acting on this object in order for it to roll down the inclined plane. And that force is a friction force. And we know that if an object is rolling without slipping, as I described, then it must experience a static friction force at the contact point where it's touching the inclined plane. And because this object is not sliding down the inclined plane, that static friction force opposes the direction that the wheel or round object wants to slide. And if it wants to slide down the inclined plane, the static friction force would point up the inclined plane. And so these are the three forces that are acting on this object. And so let's define the radius of this object to be r. And let's say that the object has a mass m. Knowing this information, I should be able to write a net force and net torque equation that allows me to solve for the acceleration of the center of mass of this object. So let's start by writing the net force equation. The net force in the x direction is what I'm most curious about because that is the direction in which the object experiences that acceleration. There are two forces that act in that direction. There's a component of the gravitational force that points down the incline and that would be the sine component, so mg sine theta minus the friction force that points up the incline, F, would be equal to the object's mass multiplied by ACM, what I'll call ACM, which is the linear acceleration of the center of mass of this object. And next, we're going to come back to this equation, but the next thing I'd like to do is write an equation for the net torque that this object experiences, which would be equal to the object's rotational inertia, I, multiplied by its uh, angular acceleration, alpha. We spoke earlier about the fact that the friction force is the only force that causes a torque on this object. And because that force is acting 90 degrees away from this lever arm here, which is equal to the radius of this object, then the torque that this object causes would just be equal to the radius of the object, r, multiplied by the magnitude of that force, f. And the product of those two quantities would be equal to i times alpha. Now what I'd like to do is recognize that the majority of objects that roll down inclined planes, their rotational inertias can almost always be written as some number b multiplied by their mass m multiplied by their radius r squared. There are some exceptions to this, but for any uh, hollow or solid sphere, a disk, a hoop, their rotational inertia can be written as b some number times mr squared. And so this equation in blue can be written as rf equals b m r squared times alpha. And 
If I'm going to solve this equation for the acceleration of the center of mass, I don't want in any of these extra variables like alpha. And so I'd like to uh, replace alpha with something else. In order to do that, I need to remember that for an object that is rolling without slipping, every time the object goes through one full rotation, it also travels a linear distance of 2 pi r. Only objects that are rolling without slipping uh, is that true for. And when that happens, then we can say that the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the object's radius multiplied by its angular acceleration. And if that's true, then I could write this equation as RF equals BMR squared. And instead of alpha, I can write A center of mass over R. And now I notice there are a lot of R's in this equation. On the right hand side I have R squared over R, which is just R. And on the left hand side I have R. So all of the R's cancel, leaving me with F equals B M. ACM. And now I'd like to take this expression for the friction force and substitute that into the equation in green, the equation where we wrote Newton's second law for the x direction. If I do that, I get mg sine theta minus bm ACM equals m times ACM. And now I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to cancel the m's because each term in this equation contains an m. But I'm also going to add that uh, BACM to both sides of the equation such that I get G sine theta equals BACM plus ACM. And now if I factor an ACM out of both sides of the equation, I get G sine theta equals ACM and then I could write this as B plus 1 or 1 plus B inside the parentheses. If you factor the ACM back, in, back into those parentheses, you'll get ACM plus ACM times B, the same thing as above. And so the acceleration of the center of mass of this object can be given by G sine theta divided by 1 plus b. This equation illustrates very well that the acceleration of an object that rolls down an inclined plane for a given g and a given theta only really depends on the mass distribution of the object. And that mass distribution is quantified in that variable b which is in the rotational inertia equation. If we were to compare quickly the rotational inertia equations for a disk and a hoop, for example, a disk has a rotational inertia of one half m r squared, and a hoop has a rotational inertia of one m r squared, or just m r squared. And so if you recognize that the B values for the disk and the hoop are one half and one, you would know what number you are dividing by in order to calculate the linear acceleration of, of an object going down. And of course, you could use those accelerations to understand which ones would get to the bottom of the inclines the fastest. And in fact, if you place any disk in any hoop at the top of an inclined plane, a disk will always beat a hoop simply because it has a mass distribution that makes it easier for the object to rotate. And lastly, one thing that I'd like to do is compare this acceleration equation to the acceleration of an object that slides down an inclined plane without friction. And so if we quickly remind ourselves of the situation where we have maybe a box at the top of an incline that experiences only a downward gravitational force mg and a normal force that is perpendicular to the plane, then maybe we remember that this object experiences only one force down the incline, which is mg sine theta. And that single force would be equal to the object's mass times the object's acceleration. And so for this sliding object, the acceleration would be given by, after the masses cancel, simply g sine theta. 
So I think it's rather elegant to notice that for an object sliding down an inclined plane without friction, the acceleration is g sine theta, but for an object rotating down an inclined plane rolling without slipping, the acceleration is always going to be g sine theta divided by a number that's bigger than one. And what this means is that if you could engineer a situation where an object could be sliding down an inclined plane without friction, it will experience an acceleration of g sine theta, which is always going to be bigger than any object that will rotate down that inclined plane. And so I challenge you to come up with some conceptual reasoning uh, for why that, that's the case, uh, and maybe you can refer to the diagrams that we've drawn here.